Hey everybody, it's Bo Benjamin with Bo Benjamin Realty Group powered by eXp and today we are talking about are we in a recession and what to do. Based on the definition of a recession that is two consecutive quarters of decrease in GDP. Technically we are not in a depression yet as uh, we have had the second quarter reportings of a, a slowdown or pullback in GDP but most people predict that will happen. So what does that actually mean for you? It just means that economic growth is slowing and it means that things are probably gonna change. So in a recession, um, the best thing to do is get back to your fundamentals, do your normal savings, do your normal investing, things of that nature. I would recommend if you've been on the fence as a seller we are at a point where you may make the most money from the sale of your house no one knows how long a recession will last it's important to point out a depression is a long recession is the best way to say a depression as a seller this may be the best time right if you're thinking about it and you're waiting it's important to be prepared for that here's how to protect your money lock in a new job now right so if you are unemployed currently or you are not happy you know get this job situation stable we talked about you know potentially selling your home these rates are great i'm sorry the prices are great the rates are going to continue to rise uh, which may dampen demand right cover your cash needs in a recession it's good to have the rainy day fund built out. Not everybody has that, but uh, you never know what could go wrong. And if you're already having a recession, you don't want to have a recession, no money, no cash reserves, and uh, nothing to um, take care of a uh, situation. And this is probably the most important. Don't trade on the headlines. Trading on the headlines is a bad idea no matter when, but especially during a recession. You're going to see volatility in the next few months because people in the market, no offense, they're crazy. Because they can click a button and sell and buy. And there's no reason to sell and buy. Again, talk to your financial advisor, but you shouldn't be buying and selling. Now, if your job is to day trade and you've researched, you've put in a PhD worth of education to day trade, so be it. You're in the top 10% of the world as far as knowledge in the market and stuff and whether you should trade daily. The rest of the population probably should not trade your stocks right now. My economics professor during my Master's of Business program said this to me and I'll never forget it. In a 20 year sliding window of the entire history of the stock market, nothing has ever beat the S&P 500 index. Why would you try? If I mean, we have hundreds of years of data that says nothing's ever beat it in a 20 year sliding window. So let's say 59 and a half is when you can grab that money out of the thing. So if you are 39 and a half or younger, there is zero reason why you should be in anything except the S&P 500 based on history and facts. So it's just incredible to me how many people try to beat the market and no one's ever done it. And here's another, here's a couple other little short stories. So the Warren Buffett has put out, he shortened the window to five years. He said to any money manager on Wall Street, any of the people that you know make hundreds of millions of dollars um, off us by managing our money, and he said if anyone can beat the S&P 500 in a five year span, I will donate a million dollars to your charity. If you take the bet and you can't, you have to donate a million dollars to my charity. One of the best money managers of his time took this bet and he backed out of the bet after like two and a half years, three years. He basically said, I lost. He tried to manage buying and selling, buying and selling, buying and selling, and he lost to the S&P 500 index. And then lastly, the the other story that I was shocked by, it was just recently the Denver Broncos are going to be for sale in the NFL. John Elway, when he was last years of his contract, was offered ownership in the Denver Broncos. Instead of having this ludicrous contract at that time, they said, we'll give you a more normal contract, but we'll give you ownership. I think it was like 10% ownership in the Broncos. And at the time, the NFL and the, I think this was 
late 90s maybe. Um, it wasn't nearly as big as it is now. It's still big, but not like it is now. And that growth, they showed like if he would have taken that deal, he would have literally had like a billion dollars. I forget the exact number. doesn't matter. If he would have taken that, it would have grown tremendously. He would have been part of the growth of the NFL and the Broncos valuation. And then when they sold, he would get his chunk. Well, he didn't. And the article is kind of about that regret, right? But then at the very end of the article, this was the most interesting part. At the very end of the article, it said, here's the percentage growth he would have had had he taken that deal, 10% ownership in the Broncos versus taking the money they gave him. But then they said, but if he took the money they paid him and put it in the S&P 500 index, he actually would have outperformed the growth of the NFL over the last 25, 30 years, whatever it is. Stop and think about that for a second. One of the most known, popular, money-making industries in our country over the last 30 years didn't beat the S&P 500. Back to the point of this, let's flip back over. Don't trade on the headlines. There's no reason to trade. Now, again, talk to your financial advisor. If you're 40 or older, you're in that last 20 year span, perhaps there's a different strategy. You start slowly putting things into safer stocks that can't go up and down as much. Don't panic just because you hear the word recession. The word recession is just a name attached to two quarters of pullback and we're letting the steam off. Don't panic, make wise decisions. And if you do decide to sell that house, please reach out and be happy to help you through that process. Thank you so much for watching. If you enjoyed it, like and subscribe down below. Please provide comments and let us know what you think. Appreciate it so much. Talk to you next time.